Hello everybody, and here is another Patreon video for you. We're going to start with a question from Julia Wilkerson. Thank you so much. The question is, Into the Spider-Verse, they did some really interesting stuff with layering to direct the focus by displaying some stuff as intentionally doubled. What do you think of it, and what do you think they use it well slash were their places they could have used it more effectively all right so i'm sorry that face was just about that i just lost the page i had up so to talk about this i'm going to talk about a lot of the shorthand of comics so this is going to get a little a little disconnected from into the spider verse but hopefully i'll loop back and forgive me i'm really sick right now today so i'm very stuffy and i may make some gross snot noises um, so what a lot of what Into the Spider-Verse did that really amazed a lot of people, and I think a lot of what they did that people didn't realize, is that Into the Spider-Verse, not uniquely so, but I think in a lot of ways more so than any other movie, used comic book tropes, the visual tropes of comic books. So like, I'm going to separate things by saying in character things, in character things that happen in that movie. Miles Morales becomes Spider-Man. It's been a minute since I've seen it, and I've only seen it once. It just got to the cheap theater, so I'm going to go some more. But, you know, I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but some people die. In characters, what actually happens to the characters, what the world around them, how they see it is. Out of characters, what we see. We have a book where we're reading this story happens. We see images on page, letters on pages. Um, and the job of any artist is to bridge that gap between out of character and in character as seamlessly as possible so that when you're reading a book watching a movie even listening to music or playing a video game you forget that you're mashing buttons and you feel like you're actually Laura Croft you forget you're reading a book and you feel like you're actually at Hogwarts into the spider-verse did that very well by going against what we think and using the things that are the tools to bridge that gap in their in-character world. So like one of the things that we you asked about specifically is like Ditko dots. And um, Ditko dots are, they show up a lot in the Spider-Verse, especially when they're around the, muse uh, the mus machine that bridges the gap between worlds. They run into a lot of these Ditko dots, which are, and I don't have any examples, unfortunately, because I don't have any comics that hit around that time period, but they're those big patterns of like stippled dots. You guys probably think of them a lot as like um, uh, backgrounds and kind of things. They're not quite the same, although they are very similar to like the dots you'll see now when they do like girls who do comic book makeup face. The printing dots, it's sort of the same thing. I think that that's probably very likely where that texture was uh, inspired by but these would be like big dots that fill up the background and that's what they were for it was a way to quickly fill the background with texture and color that didn't bring you out of the scene so that you could get to the story faster and a lot of these techniques that's what they are or they might be things that you saw a lot in old comics you talked about the double imaging would come up a lot because let's be real in the 60s 70s 80s comics were maybe not high collector's editions so they would get off printed quite often which would mean one color would be a little bit set off at the printer maker or all the colors would be a little bit set off and you get that kind of vintagey off filling um another thing that you see a lot with comics although i don't think into the spider verse used it was blue line sketchy drawings underneath where they'll be in a light blue which originally came from it's called non-photo blue because back in the day photocopiers couldn't pick it up so we would, I, I wouldn't use it, but comic artists at that day, as well as like architects and people would do their designs and their sketches in this blue line and then go over it once it was clean and they knew what they wanted in the pen and they run it through the copier machine, all the blue would disappear. I don't think I'm gonna need this book after I hunted down this page, but. <laughs> and so these are kind of all these things that have become part of this culture and this language of comic books. And Into the Spider-Verse was really, really amazing at using that language to pull you deeper into the story. Um, question? How do you feel that this more literal take on a comic book is going to affect the cinematic comic book landscape? That is a great question. So, like I said, for one, Into the Spider-Verse isn't the first time this has ever happened. Uh, 
Another example that comes to mind that is not my favorite, and you all can yell at me in the comments, but I do not like Scott Pilgrim. A lot of, because I do not like Michael Sarah in that role. But that movie is really good at, um at using those kind of tropes and stuff. Um, so it's not, this isn't the first time it's ever happened. Um, I would also say uh, Speed Racer is more the anime side of it, but part of the reason I love that movie so much is because it's like speed lines and it's not just like, oh, anime has speed lines. Oh, comic books have Ditko dots. They understand what the purpose of those things are and use them intentionally to add to the story not take it away to pull you into it more um to pull you into this over the top comic book sort of feel um and i think that's something that i hope to an extent comic book movies continue to embrace but i don't want to see a whole bunch of movies that do it exactly the same way as into the spider-verse so into the spider-verse uses a lot of art shorthands um, in contrast, Aquaman, I feel like, uses a lot of storytelling sh shorthands that are familiar to comics. And I think bringing these into movies is a good idea because that is a lot of the reason why people like comic books. But I only think if you understand why they work in comic books and can make them work in movies as opposed to just being like, wow, people really liked Into the Spider-Verse because it had a lot of texture, so I'm going to layer a whole bunch of texture into Into the Spider-Verse. And I'm kind of worried that that's going to happen because I've seen a lot of like, what about this idea but Into the Spider-Verse and some of them like Batman Beyond, I heard they're considering that as an Into the Spider-Verse movie and oh my god, that story would work so well, literally almost the same as Into the Spider-Verse. I've seen other things brought up that seem a lot like, like that, like Into the Spider-Verse was popular, so let's add that to Batman. I know I just used Batman Beyond as an example. I'm sick, I can't think of anything. Let's add that to Captain America. Well, that doesn't really work for Steve. That's not his kind of, his kind of, oh my God, let me wait for this loud car to pass. All right, that's not his kind of story. And there might be other parts of comic book that you could bring into his kind of story if you wanted to do a more comic-y inspired movie versus what we have, which is a more epic fan, not, well, fantasy. I mean, superheroes are pretty much fantasy, but it's a lot more of a movie movie. It's, it's filmed like a movie. It's cut like a movie. It's edited like a movie as opposed to Spider-Man, which is cut and edited like a comic book. Umbrella Academy was cut and edited like a comic book. You look at it, it's not page by page of the comic book, but they brought over comic elements of it in a very different way. So there would be another good example of how I think like Into the Spider-Verse could be brought through successfully without ending up with a bunch of carbon copies of brightly colored, texture filled, which some things, Batman Beyond, that would be really good for, but some things it just won't work. And so I'm hoping against hope because Hollywood is not really well known for this, but that those ideas will be used well and not badly because I really love the techniques that pull us into comic books and someday maybe I'll do a video just about talking about those techniques and panel transitions and stuff like that. I love to see them getting more respect and brought more in because comics is unique and right now I don't think we as a culture, probably all the people watching this do, but as a culture we don't respect comic books as their own unique story form. It is a story that ended up a comic book instead of and I don't, that's not comics, and I don't think comic makers feel that way, and I think as more of them end up in the process, as more people who love comics end up in the process, that those parts of comics will start to come through that work on screen versus just throwing everything up there. Any more questions? I don't think so. All right, guys. Well, I think that's going to be it for this week. Kind of got a little rambly, um, but feel free to throw any more questions at us. Thanks, guys.